All right, welcome back. This is part three, how to switch from XP to Ubuntu Linux. If you haven't already, please check out, uh, check out part one and part two. I will have links below in the show notes. Make sure you take a look at those first if you are completely new to the world of Ubuntu Linux. All right, this is the install screen. English, of course, you have two choices, try Ubuntu, install Ubuntu. You can try Ubuntu without making any changes to your computer directly from the CD or in, 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 in your situation, I showed you how to create a USB bootable uh, stick. Uh, let's see, or if you're ready, it says you can install Ubuntu alongside your current operating system. In your situation, as you go along, I, I do not have Windows XP installed, but in your situation, as you go along, you will have a screen that says something like, uh, you know, do you wish to install this alongside Windows XP or delete the entire hard disk to replace your current operating system? Well, you want to replace your outdated operating system with Ubuntu. So bear that in mind as you go along. But for now, we click install Ubuntu. Now, how long this, this takes depends on your processing uh, you know speed is it a single core dual core how much RAM and stuff like that as far as Ubuntu uh, as far as Ubuntu goes I recommend that you have at least one gigabyte of RAM all right for best results it says here please have at least 6.1 gigabytes available drive space and you are connected to the internet if you are installing this on a laptop make sure it is plugged in two more options here download updates while installing and install other uh, third-party software I will not be clicking this, but in your situation, you definitely should click all of this. Click continue. All right, in my situation, erase disk and install Ubuntu. Again, in your situation, you will probably see another option that says to install alongside Windows XP. You do not want to do that. You want to erase the entire disk. Click install now. All right, your time zone, click continue. Keyboard layout is English, continue. All right, who are you? I am a human, of course. Anyway, you can type in any name you want. For this situation here, I would just type in a uh, test and you can type in anything else here that you want to also test and test 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 password i'll just you know one two three for now do not use that password of course to keep it simple i would say log in uh, automatically and of course it's telling you a short password but since i'm just doing this for demonstration purposes i'll leave it the way it is click continue All right, this is the latest version. This is not quite the finalized version. If you recall in part one, it is the final beta. It's close to the final version. This may have some bugs. I've been testing this since alpha. It appears stable, which means it should not crash. There are still a few bugs, but I think these are bugs that you might be able to still deal with, with and use the computer. If you want to be absolutely sure, you could just wait until the final release of this, which is due, I believe, oh, April 17th of this month, April 20th, uh, somewhere around there. Around there. Now, the, um, the install process, if you wait till then, of course, the install process is exactly the same. All right. Let's see, it says here, find even more software. You can use something called the Ubuntu Software, and software Center to install software. Most of it is free, some it is paid. Some of the software you may have heard of, of course, if you use Skype and Windows, there is Skype for Linux, Firefox, you know, and stuff like that. You notice the progress bar here at the bottom. In part four, we'll take a look on how to navigate to and through the Ubuntu operating system. But like I said, for now, for this, just the install process itself. Rhythmbox Music Player is the default, usually is the default music player. I use it and I like it. 
Now this is strictly for music, not for videos. For videos, I would probably install VLC. Of course, that is a uh, that is a terrific music player for Windows, also music and video. As you can see at the bottom here, it is installing system. Ubuntu 14.04 called Trusty Tar. This will be supported for five years. They do release uh, updated systems, operating systems, cutting edge systems, as it were, every six months. And generally, I recommend you don't install those. All right, the included photo manager is called Shotwell. Shotwell. You could also try GIMP Image Editor if you're into editing your photographs. I believe GIMP is also available for Windows. Now, as I stated before in, um, in the previous parts to this, uh, part one, I believe, make sure you back up any important file or files that you have, since you will be, of course, deleting your old operating system to install this. You may want to, before you transfer any files to your USB flash drive or drives or external drives, you may want to run a latest virus scan on those files before you transfer the files to your external drive because if you transfer infected files on those drives uh, those uh, those drives will be infected and if you are buying another Windows PC and not doing this and of course you would be transferring you know from one computer virus from one computer to another computer Ubuntu based on Linux Oh, is less susceptible to malware. Not 100%, nothing is, but you will find uh, Ubuntu Linux to be a little bit more secure, if not a lot more secure, than what you've been used to with Windows XP. LibreOffice Writer is a free office suite packed with everything you need to create documents, spreadsheets, compatible with Microsoft Office. Again, this is uh, basically a fancy word processor. This may be all you need. There are other lightweight versions. If you do not need the, com the complete suite, you may want to try a lightweight word processor called Abbey Word, A-B-I Word. Ubuntu 14.04 with the Unity interface is going to look and feel completely different than what you have been used to. Uh, it took a while for me to get used to it at the beginning, and I think the reason why I still use it and like it because it is different. Uh, it may not be for you. You know, after trying this, it may very well be that, you know what, Toss, uh, Ubuntu looks cool, but I prefer to stick what I've been comfortable with, with, you know, Windows, and that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I still use Windows 7. So if you've seen Windows 8 and not quite comfortable with that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Windows 7. I'll have links below in the show notes so you can test, uh, check out the um, Total OS Today shop, the marketplace, and give you some recommendations for upgrading your PC. Linux in general is highly customizable. And you can check out a few websites, uh, askubuntu.com for answers or ubuntu.com slash forward slash support. All right, you see here at the bottom, configuring hardware. I have been dual booting now for four years. This channel, the Total OS Today channel, has been around four years. It was four years ago as of... As of um, March 29th. Thank you, by the way, if you have been following this channel for four years. Uh, this channel was created for you, the beginners who needed to start off somewhere as I did. Uh, this channel wouldn't be here without you guys, so thank you very much for all of your support. Alright, this should be almost done. 
There are other lighter weight alternatives to Ubuntu, such as Lubuntu, Zubuntu, Linux Lite is also good, Zorin Lite. If you have uh, less than a gig of RAM, I would probably recommend one of those. I personally like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and something called Zorin Linux. Now after this is installed, you would reboot and you should immediately, of course, install all the updates. We'll look into that in the next part, which is, which will be, uh, let's see, part four. Now as you can see here, it's pretty much, there you go, it's fully automatic and it says installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. And you would restart and you would boot into your brand new Ubuntu operating system and assuming that there's nothing wrong with your hardware you should be good to go in terms of booting into the new system alright that's it for this for now in the next part we will go into the actual you know how to do the updates maybe some navigation tips on how to use Ubuntu Unity 14.04 for the very first time if you are coming from Windows. But for now, for this, thank you so much for watching and listening. Thank you for four years. Welcome aboard all of the new subscribers. And please consider a small donation to keep this content going. Thank you so much. I will catch all of you guys later.